Hey now everybody, this is Professor Island, and today we're discussing what I teach and what I don't teach in my classes. First, a little bit about me. Uh, not that it matters much, but uh, understand that when I was in high school, I skated through. I didn't really have to work very hard to maintain passable grades, and since I worked through most of my high school career, that's what I was focused on. And really, my whole point was just to get out of there because I was having such a great time. I got into college simply because I had good SAT scores. And back then, frankly, getting into Cal Poly was not that difficult. You wandered down there and said, I'd like to join. And they look at your SAT scores and say, OK, come on in. Uh, however, my first quarters at uh, Cal Poly, I did horribly. I was subject to disqualification, which essentially meant that they wanted to kick me out because I was getting Ds. I didn't know how to study. I didn't know how to organize my time. I didn't know how to maximize what I need to maximize. And there was a lot less interaction between the instructor and the student. I was one of many people sitting in there taking notes and then the next time I'd see them there'd be a test and if I did well, fine. If I didn't, I got a grade, not much of an explanation. And that was pretty much it. And what I did is I reevaluated my situation, went and saw a counselor, began to take classes that were uh, a lot more along the lines of things that I understood and I was familiar with. I also cut back on my work hours and eventually got a job at the campus itself to make that even more, kind of a more uh, centralized situation. And by the time I graduated, I had gone from a 0.6 GPA, which apparently is not good, to a 3.01, which for me was a huge victory. Um, and by the time I got out, I had learned to study. I had learned to organize my time, my notes, my information. I had learned to excel in a class and to be motivated because I needed to be there. And that's really what it was all about. Why is this important to you? Well, it's probably not important to you at all, but it has a lot to do with what I do for a living. I start out as a science major. Uh, in fact, I have a degree in animal science. But what I was doing was filling in my GPA with English classes because they were easy. And later on, I realized I should be doing something that I know about. I decided to get a master's degree in English and they said, yeah, you know, come on in, just don't mess it up or we'll kick you out again. So I, I did and I stayed on the high B, A level. Um, but as part of that, I was offered a job, as many grad students are, as a basic skills teacher for two reasons. One, it gives me uh, practical experience. And two, uh, frankly, PhDs don't like teaching transfer courses. Uh, they like teaching literature courses. And this is what they dumped on, on the rest of us. That's when I learned that I like teaching. I like teaching because I like talking about literature, which I do exclusively in my classes, and I also like helping people organize something in a way that allows them to get their own ideas out on paper. And it's not really a matter of them learning from me what I think. In fact, I try as much as possible not to share what I think about any particular thing, as much as to try to get you to understand how you are supposed to get what you think and what you think the answer is down on a piece of paper. To that end, what I do in my class essentially is discuss literary devices. And as part of that, the personal part of, of who we are and what we think is less and less important, and this is a more structural approach. For English 101, I'm teaching you the literary devices such as symbolism, irony, conflict. The translation of the work is based solely and particularly on those elements and has nothing to do with what you personally believe. The fact that you might have lived a particular experience might help you to understand a story. But when you're analyzing that story, you will analyze it according to the literary devices rather than your own personal response. For English 103 and above, I am also working with literary devices, but in this case, it is the critical perspectives. And as part of that, again, we're analyzing how the critical perspective would translate the work, not you personally. And this objective notion, this objectivity in terms of translating something in a way that's not about the reader's personal feelings, but more about the observation that this is how a work is cobbled together and this is how a particular audience might respond to it, is an important aspect, not only in terms of literature, not only in terms of the fact that this is how these classes are supposed to be, but also in terms of the larger notion of critical thinking. And that critical thinking aspect is what makes the class transfer, especially 103 and above. That's what makes those classes transfer to the university, to Cal State, et cetera. Um, and that's why I emphasize those things. To that end, I don't care what you think about the works themselves. They're not really that important anyway. It has to do with the literary devices and how well you apply them and whether or not you can apply them. It has to do with your research and how well you apply it and whether or not you can apply it. It has to do with your formatting of 
MLA formatting of what a works cited page looks like and what the citation in the text work looks like because that's what is expected of you when you go on to the next class and somebody says, you must have taken English 103 because you're in my class. I expect you know X, Y, and Z, and those are the things I focus on. Nobody's going to ask you what you learn to think about a particular work. They may ask you what symbolism is. They may say to you, apply a feminist criticism, and that's what you're learning in my class, and that's why I focus on those elements. What this means to you, uh, what we don't do in my class is I don't tell you what the answer is to any particular story. I don't say, this author wrote this particular work, and it means this, this, and this, and then you write down notes, and then you take a test, and you tell me exactly what I told you, and then you get an A. Instead, what we do is we talk about the literary device, symbolism, or the literary critical perspective, deconstruction. And we talk about it, and we use the works from the class to go through it, to practice it. The same way if you're on the baseball team, you got your pitcher throwing baseballs at you all day, and you're hitting and hitting and hitting, so when you get in the game and it's somebody else's pitcher, you know how to hit that. And it's the same way, because you're going to get a test, and on that test is going to be a work that we've not discussed in class, and then you have to show me that you understand what symbolism is, that you understand what deconstruction is, by applying it back to that story, back to that poem, back to that play. And that's essentially how it works. For people who expect, you know, just tell me what the answer is, and then I'll remember it. That's not the way it works, because I'm not teaching you what any particular work means. I'm teaching you how to apply this to any work that you come across. And that includes not only the, the stuff you watch on television, the books that you might read, the movies you might see, but the commercials that you watch and the cartoons you watch with your kids or that you watch yourself, uh, what a painting might mean. You know, all of this stuff has to do with this critical thinking skill. Understanding why two people are standing up on podiums arguing back and forth on a subject and how they can have such completely different views on what that is. That's what the critical perspectives are about. Um, why somebody looks at a painting and says, this is genius and it means this. Where'd they get that? Oh, they understand symbolism. Uh, they understand irony. This is the kind of stuff that we're learning in my class and it has less to do with any specific identifiable meaning to a particular work as it has to do with how we apply meaning in a more general way. You're not allowed to express your personal opinion. I will not tell you my personal opinion. And for English majors, you may say, yeah, you know, but I like talking kind of around a work and discussing, you know, all the other works I've read and stuff like that. I don't want you to do that either. What I really want you to do is get to the analysis of the work that either you've chosen or that I chose for you and use the literary devices and demonstrate your understanding of the literary devices, demonstrate your understanding of the research process, demonstrate your understanding of MLA formatting, and that's how you get a good grade in my class. That means we do a research paper in my class. The research paper actually makes the English 101 class transfer to a college or university. If there was no research paper, uh, the class would not transfer, basic bottom line. For the other classes, it is the critical analysis, it is the critical thinking through the critical perspectives applied to work that make the class transfer. That's why the class is called Composition and Critical Thinking, because it's the critical thinking part that makes Cal State and UC accept it as a transferable course. Your demonstration of that is on a research paper, and I need you to do the research paper the correct way. I needed an MLA research paper, not an APA research paper. It doesn't mean the APA research papers are bad. They are just a different format, and in your psychology class, they're going to expect you to know how to do that. Each one has its own skill. Each one has its own specifics, and I need you to do MLA in my class. In the same way, we get to the larger aspects of that literary analysis and critical thinking. It's your ability to understand what somebody else thinks and why they think that way. Why does this particular culture respond to this particular work in this particular way? Your research will tell you why. Oh, because they believe X, Y, and Z, and in this work, they are against X, Y, and Z, and therefore this culture would respond in this particular way. This research, this information, this gathering process is what we do in the class. And as part of that, I expect you to do it. It doesn't necessarily mean you have to like it. It may be that you are forced to analyze something, uh, either because I said do it this way or because uh, it's the choices that you've left, to apply a critical perspective that you don't like, that you don't agree with, that you don't agree with the basic philosophy of. Uh, that doesn't matter. It'd be like if you're in an art class and somebody said, look, I need you to do a painting for me in reds and oranges. And you're like, I hate reds and oranges. I do everything in blue. You want to pass the class, you got to do something in red. You have to understand how red works. You have to understand how red affects the, the observer. It uh, doesn't mean you have to like it, but you have to be able to do it. And in the same way, it doesn't matter if you like uh, psychoanalytical criticism or Marxist criticism or feminist criticism. It, you have to be able to identify it, and you have to be able to use it. And as long as you do that, your grade will be fine. Um, all in all, 
it's really a matter of learning a philosophy of analysis more than anything else. And your ability to follow the basic formatting elements as well as the basic content elements and to stay on those things will yield you a much better grade. Keep those things in mind and you'll be very happy with your grade and you might actually learn something. More importantly, if you're struggling with those elements, we do have resources on campus that will help you to get into that mindset, to get into that way of thinking, because eventually it may be asked of you, and I want you to be prepared for those next classes. Keep working on this stuff. If you have questions, contact me, especially through email, and I'll be more than happy to explain it to you, and hopefully the resources I have will be helpful as well. But understand what we're doing, and get through this as best you can, and stay in touch.